Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me here in Airport CEO overlooking, well it's just gone midnight, the nighttime operations at Ajaxima Airport. And have we done anything, have I done anything since the last episode? Not a great deal, to be honest. Uh, we, we, I think more or less got everything we wanted in into the airport in terms of features and operations. Uh, I did make this area bigger. This, uh, this whole area here uh, was was empty. So what I was thinking I might do is add in another gate. You could always have more flights, can't you? Um, yeah, even though my flight schedule is kind of busy at the moment. Yeah, um, there's not much room for more, any much, for much more else. Let's see if I can actually speak English today. You know, putting words in the correct order. Um, but then I think I noticed when I was going in here to put down a new stand, uh, yeah, a new stand, the large ones were 300,000. I've got less than 200 in my bank at the moment, and I already have two loans outstanding. Although one of them, one of them, this one here is, uh, which one is it? Uh, I've got 10 hours left. Sorry, I was, a lot of I was seeing payment plan there. No, I haven't got 14 days left. <laughs> only 10 hours left on that one uh, till that's paid off. Uh, like That was, my, I think, my very first big loan. Uh, this one, I've got another few days before that one's paid off, but that, that's much less. So, actually, the hourly cost, you know, it's four grand an hour. But if we look at our stats, we're doing quite well on an hourly basis. We're, we're making money on a 24-hour average, uh, nearly three and a half grand in profit. Daily, though, slightly less good because I, I will insist on doing what I did here, and that's spending money. However, let me just pause this for a second. There's one other little thing that you might have noticed if you've been very eagle-eyed and been looking across the screen. Uh, there's a little exclamation mark down here on the asterisk here, on the flight monitor, which we don't look at very often. In fact, I'm not sure I've even looked at it once in terms of the these videos, but it tells you the current status of all the flights uh, in and c coming in and going out of your airport and how well they're doing. It's a nice summary, to be honest. I like tables. So it gives you a good summary of the gate they're at, uh, what state they're in boarding, they're landed, they're en route, and so on. And in terms of the number of passengers at the airport, how many are checked in, how many have gone through security, um, and how many are actually boarded and ready to go, and how far it's got in terms of loading and unloading baggage, being fueled, and so on. Now, we notice this plane down here, which is due to arrive at 4.35, so that's about three hours away. We've got an alert on it. It's a critical alert. And it's telling me here there are no available check-in desks for TA-283 due to all check-in desks connected to the flight stand connected baggage bay are occupied by other flights. Okay, uh, make sure the stand's connected baggage bay has enough connected available check-in desks. Critical! Uh, so does this mean that plane may not turn up or there will be serious delays on it? I'm not entirely sure. There's been no delay notification just yet. That might turn up in due course. Uh, it's only a tiny plane as well. Uh, stand SO2. Uh, so is that you? Is that you? Yeah. And you're not connected to a baggage bay anyway. What? <laughs> so what is the problem then? Um, if no, because I think only this, yeah, only this one small stand gets baggage anyway. Uh, this stand doesn't at all. Boarding not stuck. No. So what? Why is that? Oh, I don't understand now. But it's definitely yeah, commercial stand zero two, uh, small zero two, which is what the S there is, as opposed to the M for medium. Uh, right. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure when they will start checking in because there are certainly free check-in desks here. Uh, we, I've, I've added, oh, I've also added in a second uh, self-bag. <laughs> Self-bagging? <laughs> yes, uh, a bag drop-off. 
for these self-service uh, customers. That's uh, Oh, now I am slightly confused, because what confused me as well on this, let's get the game running slowly again, is the baggage bay here. It's difficult for me to quite understand what the capacity is on this thing. It says here that the total maximum connections, 7p, 12p, does that mean people? Does that mean stands? I'm not entirely sure what the P stands for there. Oh, maybe, ah... Okay, so a connected small stand, it says 1p. Connected medium stands, 1.5p. And connected large stands, 2p's. Ah, right. So that kind of, I suppose, is a, a rating or a grading for the amount of baggage it handles. So the smaller stands obviously do smaller, need smaller capacity. Ah, okay, so I've basically got, uh, yeah, 3, 4, 5. Uh, okay. Oh no, that's two stands, isn't it? Oh no, so that's three times 1.5. So that's uh, three, 4.5, 6.5, ooh, 7.5, I suppose. Yes. Right, I, I think that works. I'm just wondering if I increase this station, this ramp agents on the, you're working the, the baggage bay. If that will make it more efficient, increase capacity or anything like that, make it faster. Do I need more staff? We're okay there by the look of it so far, but we are middle of the night, so things aren't very busy. But I am confused by this TA-283 flight. Why is complaining about baggage when it doesn't get baggage servicing? Anyway. Well, we'll see what will happen. Uh, I'm waiting for winter to turn up as well. Because we have got our de-icing system ready. Where's our stand? Oh, there it is. We've got the one de-icing pad. I've no idea if that is enough or not. <laughs> so I have three medium stands and one large stand. Is that a medium one as well? I think it's a medium one as well. So, uh, mm. Now, our large stand does support medium aircraft. Yeah. So not every flight coming into our... Ooh, that critical error message is gone now. Uh, 283 is no longer critical. Ah, mm, weird. Okay. Is that another bug in the game? Could be. It could be. Very strange indeed. Uh, so, yes. What are we... Oh, so, yeah, I'm waiting for winter to turn up properly to see if this de-icing thing works. And what I might do as well is, once we've cleared that other loan, is perhaps add in another stand. But what I might want to do... Ooh, yes, because I think I mentioned in the last episode, I have been adding in some modded airlines. Uh, so we do have contracts that we can take with real airlines. I've only put a few in so far. Um... I thought I had done this in the last episode, but apparently not. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Oh, hang on. Or do I? Actually, what I think might have happened is I think I had the United... I might... Uh, I wish I could remember stuff. I really should re-watch my previous videos before I record the next one. Because it is usually about a week, several days at least, between each video recording. And uh, I have an, a significant habit of forgetting what the heck it was I was doing in the previous episode. I think I might have actually added United, but I got no flights from them at all. So I might have taken them off. So what other airlines do we have? We've got Lufthansa. They get, well, they give me a nice range of flights as well. Uh, so we'll sign a deal with them. That is good. And uh, flight schedule. Was full, but yeah, there are gaps appearing in some of these spaces here. But I think that was a problem with the United one, why I was getting confused as to why am I not seeing any flights, was because uh, they needed a given number of days clear to put flights in. And here at the moment, we don't have that much clearance, so we can put a flight in on Wednesday, but... Can we put it in on the following days? Because you do need those clear days. 
to put them in. Well, my, my team does. And actually, talking of my team, so we'll come back and hopefully see Lufthansa uh, coming in fairly soon. What have we got here? Oh, you're a Goosewing. You are. You're an E19, E190 to Edinburgh. That's good. That's using an international gate for, an, for a domestic flight. Okay. Well, I suppose my team know what they're doing. But anyway, what I was saying, talking of my team, there was one administrative post I've not filled yet. And is this staff here? It is staff here. So that's my executive committee. We haven't filled the HR director post. And that allows me to set salaries. I can set shifts and working hours. I've not even tr looked at how that works yet. But the thing that I really liked was reduces a salary cost by 15% and boosts employee productivity by 5% when present at airport. Does that mean when my HR director is present? Yeah, I think it does, because that's, yes. Uh, right, so let's, we want a HR director, because I like productivity and lower salaries. So, executives. Uh, who do we have for HR? HR director, H, we've got only, ooh, 20. Well, you're, you're, yeah, okay, we'll take Tina Krajnik. You can come in. And hopefully, yeah, she will be reducing my, uh, my staff costs, which would be nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I will fast forward this little bit till we get to winter, which uh, will probably be, probably be tomorrow now. So we've not had a weather forecast alert. What's our weather forecast looking like? Tomorrow, oh, it's getting quite chilly. 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I still use Fahrenheit. I am that old and traditional. <laughs> Refusing to move with the times. Although I do measure, I do understand kilograms and meters and stuff. Although, of course, here in the UK, we still use miles, pints and, and gallons. Proper British gallons clouds are coming in if there's cloud cover it probably won't freeze over so yeah apologies to anyone who doesn't understand Fahrenheit temperatures not really <laughs> right I will see you on the other side of this big, big sexy video effect and uh, we will hopefully have some frost on the ground see you soon okay just uh, well we haven't quite got there yet but just as I uh, pause that recording I got a notification that we have contract negotiations open to us for Olympus so we can renegotiate our flights with them and we have three negotiation points to spend apparently uh, so if we go to uh, economy operations where is it yes here it is accepted contracts Olympus so let's negotiate this although I do have 10 negotiation points in all okay so uh, Oh, I have to have that open as well, do I? Right, fair enough. Uh, so I want to charge more for, for these flights. So let's... That's 80% acceptable. Um, can I use one negotiation point? 85... Let's use two then, shall we? Can I ask more? Oh, no, they don't like that. No, they're happier with that, so... Medium flights, they don't want to pay too much of a premium. Okay, we'll send that offer off to Olympus. Uh, that might well be my most expensive large flights at this rate. Accepted! Wow, that was easy. Good, so we're going to start making lots more money from Olympus. How many flights do we have from Olympus, actually? <laughs> we have currently 10 flights. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this. Uh, in a previous video, but I did notice when I was sort of playing forward a bit uh, off camera a while ago, is there's a maximum of 50 flights you can accept from each uh, airline. And I did at one point, again, just free playing forward, I did hit that maximum. So, yeah, so we've got currently 10 from Olympus. Uh, at the moment, we have got nothing from Lufthansa. Yeah, you see, they're offering flights, but I'm not sure where they could be scheduled. How many do they want for that one? Five, oh, they want five flights, you see. So we need a whole clear week, basically, before my negotiators, my uh, operations officer, can accept those contracts. 
Right, well, any luck, they'll start turning up at some point soonish. Right, and once again, I'm going to fast forward until we get some frost on the ground or something else exciting happens. I'll see you on the other side of this next sexy video effect. And it's here. The notice has arrived from the weather station. Winter is coming. Apparently the sun came out at about 8 o'clock last night, but can't say I noticed, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so winter is coming. And as you can see here in the little season icon at the very bottom, we have got a little white snowflake. There was me panicking a couple of episodes ago, which, how can I tell what season it is? It's quite clearly there. Uh, I, I, while you were away, uh, while that sexy video effect was running, I've made a couple of small changes. Uh, I've added an extra baggage, self-baggage drop here, and also another check-in desk here. because so I did get a quick alert earlier that one of my flights was delayed, and that kind of... Well, delayed in boarding, I think, was the main issue. And at that time, there were queues at all of these existing uh, security desks here. So I've put another one in uh, there, which hopefully should uh, alleviate that problem. I obviously have to employ another security guard. No, another... Uh, they, they are security, aren't they? Yes, security officer to, to take care of that. Oh, you see, this is very busy. I mean, people... <laughs> People just love self-service these days, don't they? They just don't like interacting with other real people. <sighs> it's like you go to a cash point machine or an ATM rather than go to a cashier on a desk. Or you use a self-checkout at your supermarket rather than having to engage with a person on a checkout desk. It's sad really, isn't it? But, you know, that's convenience and speed. It's what apparently we're all after. Okay, baggage claim appears to be quite busy. Uh, as you can see, though, there is still no ice on the ground. Still no ice de-icing needed to go on. Yeah, temperature tomorrow could fall. Right, so once again, we'll be rolling forward until we get some ice. Do we have any flights from Lufthansa yet? No, <laughs> it's the short answer. Actually, while we're here, before we get on to the de-icing thing, um, I thought what would be nice is if I could give uh, one of these other stands to Lufthansa and I was get, hoping I could share it so I, like like I could share this medium stand here between Lufthansa and Crown but you can't when you go to select a, an airline that can use the stand you can only have one so you, which I, I think would be nice if I could have multiple airlines using the same stand because some might be early morning flights, some might be midday, some might be scheduled, some might be, there, so there might be room in there for the old contract flight or whatever, or standby. That's a point. I've not seen anything like a standby stand or gate in Airport CEO like we had in Sim Airport, where if your airline, if your airport wasn't working terribly efficiently, and flights were delayed due to weather or your own incompetence in designing an airport, whatever the reason was, if flights were delayed and there was no stand available when they came in to land, they would go to a standby gate and, you would, and they would use that automatically. It would be part of the system. But I'm not seeing that here in Airport CEO. If you know any different, to be honest, I haven't researched that. It has only just this very moment occurred to me. Uh, so I may go and see if I can find some reference to it in the forums. But if you know any different, of course, please, by all means, make a note in the comments box below. It'd be great to hear from you, uh, to, to hear anything in the game that I've not yet discovered. Right, we're doing quite well. We have paid off all our loan. We're now actually approaching 300,000. So what I might do is we might actually... Is there going to be a cheap loan I can take out now? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the loans. Uh, this is a big loan. 5% interest. That's not too bad, actually. Actually, this one, Foxy Investments. That's 9% interest. So the hourly cost is substantially less, which is fine. But, I mean, 9% interest, that's a lot, isn't it? Okay, we'll come back in a few hours' time, see if there are any better loan offers on the table. And then we, we I might try and put in another large stand on here which I might give to Lufthansa for example <laughs> so, right uh, yes I will continue playing this forward and I'll see you again on the other side of another sexy video effect 
Well, we've moved on to another day, and although the weather is a bit chilly out there, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, it's still not looking very frosty. And in fact, if you look at the long-term forecast, it's simply going to get warmer. So I'm not sure if we will ever see the de-icer in action any time soon. Anyway, while I was uh, watching the airport to go uh, work, we're doing very nicely. Our funds are currently 425,000, which is very nice indeed, so we are very profitable. I notice we've got lots of contracts coming up that we can renegotiate, although I didn't get a message about that on this one. Uh, so we've got these to look at. So I thought we'll go through these before we get on to the next thing I'd like to do. Uh, we have got, uh, we've got sign contract, one type of depot of each fuel type. Yeah, so we're obviously getting bonuses depending on our relationship with these various uh, contractors. So, for example, for the airlines, we've given these airlines, Crown, Goose and Trinity, their own stand. So I get a, a sort of four negotiation point bonus, I suppose, for that, which is nice. So let's increase the charge for these contracts for Crown. Uh, can we increase that? We can. What about that? They don't really, really don't like paying more for the medium flights, do they? Well, not for both anyway. Uh, okay, we'll take it for the large ones. The large ones are really where the money is. So we'll put one of those in. Yeah, we'll send that in. They're accepting that. That's very good. Thank you, Crown. Uh, Goosewing. Uh, small and medium. Uh, again, we've got a good relationship with them. So we'll charge them more, I think, for their... Well, for both, to be honest. So if we put that up... Can I put more than five? Oh, I can't... Hmm, okay. But we'll give them four. That That's <laughs> an even chance of getting both uh, increases. We'll send that in. They've accepted it. Wow. Okay. That's very nice. Trinity. Another small and medium airline. Uh, oh, can we increase the medium even more? Oh, we can. That's very expensive now, isn't it? And the small. Oh, go on then. We've got a good relationship with you. Reasonable. No. No. Okay, we'll come back and try them again later. They will return to the table at some point. This is my contractors. I don't have many on site these days, but uh, it might as well. Uh, let's. Oh, I'm reducing the price, the cost of them. That's what I'm doing here, not not increasing it. So this is my cost. Let's take that down. Ah, that that will do fine, I think. Yep, that's good. And finally, nature fuel. Uh, so again, we want to reduce the cost, particularly of the Jet A fuel. And that one. Not too concerned about the Avgas, which is for the general aviation. Okay, we'll send that in. No, they weren't happy with that. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so where are we doing? <laughs> now it tells me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, these sort of emails come in to tell me things are available. So when the office opens, I was just ahead of the game there. How good? Uh, right, so what are we doing? We're not going to get de-icing done anytime soon by the look of it. Uh, we've got more emails coming in. This Oh, we're running out of stuff. We'll do all that in a second. Oh, only 1,700 passengers. That's interesting because about two or three days ago, if I go back to the email, that's here. Uh, it was here, was it? 18, no. That was day seven. Day eight, was it? Yeah, over 2,000 passengers. So we're doing reasonably good business, I think, which obviously explains uh, why we're profitable. Okay, uh, what was I doing? I already, oh, we're looking at the staff here. Ramp agents. Oh, yes. While, while I was fast forwarding it, during that sexy video effect, I had a look at the staff panel 
now that we've got this HR person. And I'm not quite sure where you negotiate salaries here. Uh, there doesn't, I, I, I don't know, basically. I really don't know. Um, and unfortunately, there is no help in the game. It's very li <laughs> Apart from the tutorials, this is one of the, thing I ha one of the things I have with the game. The tutorials are okay, and they improve them slightly in the, late, in the latest updates. But they're, they're not terribly good at explaining why you're doing things. Uh, which I think tutorials really ought to do. Not just how, but why you might want to do things. I think should be part of the learning experience, as it were. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if you can... How you deal with these and how you get... How you make the salary negotiations start. But, you know... Well, anyway, what, what we do have... Don't go there, go to the staff. We do have shifts. Now, again, quite different to the way Sima Airport works, where you actually have periods of the day which you are your defined shift, and you assign the number of staff you want to work during that period of the day. Uh, either sort of passenger-facing, check-in staff, and boarding desk staff, or security staff, or janitors, or whatever. You define the number of people you want to work in that role during the day. And you have to make sure, obviously, you have enough staff to cope with the amount of business your airport is doing at that time. By the look of it, again, there's no help here that I can find. And I, I really do not like having to go off to a third-party site like a wiki or something. This information should be in the game. Why? What are ships doing here? I don't know. You're, you're just saying how long a person works at a particular job. So we're saying they operate an information desk for just four hours or passport checkout for four hours. Uh, so obviously you need to make sure you've got enough staff to cope with that turnover, as it were, during the day. Which is fair enough, it's a system. It's slightly, oh, again, it's, it's with what you're used to, isn't it, I suppose. I'm not used to this, so I've, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused by it. But there you go, we'll leave that as is, I suppose. Can we make them work longer hours? Why not? Uh, and Passenger agent jobs. Oh, they only do, oh, okay, they only do hmm, interesting information desks. You can do that for five hours. I don't, act, I'm not sure I've got information desks to be honest, but there you go. Uh, security, I don't know if I set up security rounds. Uh, they don't, again, because I've turned off a number of the, the sort of in event and incident issues. I turned that off when I started the game uh, in the sandbox mode. So I probably don't need to do some of those things. Uh, right, so what we're looking for is ramp agent. We're short, short of six. Gosh, uh, we're not going to employ six new ramp agents, I can tell you that for a start. How many have we got applying? Ah, uh, you're quite good. We will bring you on board. Okay, and then we'll come back here and we'll train one of you to be better. Uh, are you here? Oh, there you are. Train you. Train you. Anybody else need training? They're okay, I think. And there we are. We're fine. We've got loads of people. We've got enough people. Yeah, it's obviously that switch over between shifts or something that's going on there. Anyway, what we can do to wrap this up, I think, we now have over 400,000 in the bank. A bit more of a loan, and we can add in a new large gate into our airport. So, shall we crack on and do that? Let's. Uh, we need to loan first, I think, to do that properly. What do we have available to us? We have here... Uh, we could take this one. This one might be enough. Because... Yeah, I think this one might be enough. We'll run fairly close, I think, in terms of our current balance. The amount we're going to spend. But okay, we'll take that loan. That is cheap. Okay. And we're, where are we going to put our new large stand? Uh, oh, oh, make sure you so, note stand. There you are. A large stand. I, I'm assuming concrete, concrete is more durable, which is why it's more expensive. Uh, and I'm certain, although well, the operating cost is lower for concrete. Oh, interesting. Mm, wonder. Mm. Uh, I'm going to spend less up front. 
<laughs> it's going, going to be my my thinking here. So what we will do is we'll have this as a remote stand. We could have you a bit like this, couldn't we? Yes, we could. Uh, down there. Like so, I think. OK, we'll put you in there. We want some. Uh, what's this? This is that's runway. I don't want runway. I want taxiway. That's it. Taxiway in asphalt. Do we need this to be five? We'll take it as five. And you can go to there. And we need some service road to connect up uh, buses and stuff. Uh, again, asphalt. And this will be going. Uh, down, I think we'll take it down like this, like so. Like that. Do we? Or do we want to make it a circle? No, we'll leave it. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it like that. I think that will work for me. Okay, so we'll get the guys building that, and I'll. Once that's done, we'll turn on the. No, I'll get them to build that as well. This planned remote bus stop. Uh, so we want you build that as well so we'll have a new boarding desk here and all the rest of it it will delete that build instruction and then what we can do is build it so it goes along like that I think yep that'll cost me a lot less in in road <laughs> okay OK, uh, I'll flash forward through this and we will uh, set this up when the thing has got built. Well, this took a little longer than I anticipated. <laughs> well, the building didn't take that long. I, I haven't got that many construction workers. So obviously, uh, yeah, d building does take a little while. So I'm afraid we're now in night time. But it has all been finished. Then I discovered there's all sorts of other rules in Airport CEO which are there to confound and confuse you. Well, well. When I eventually found the resolution on the forum, the suggestion was that if they made this assumption, it's easier for people to get it right or to understand how things work. So what happened was I have a remote bus stand here, a remote bus stop uh, for, for the airside bus shuttle. I've got a boarding desk here and I have got a large stand here. So that was going to connect to that, to that. And that was fine. Now, this is outside of the international zone. So the international zone is just this area here serving this one large stand here. OK, uh, actually, I've, I actually tinkered with the international zone there just to try and fix the problem before I realised what it was. But if I put uh, put that back on so it doesn't look quite so silly anymore. OK, right. So what happened was I then connected um, this, try to connect this boarding desk here to this stand. And it says, no, you can't do that. You cannot connect something which isn't in, in an international zone to something which is in an international zone. And I thought, no, that large stand there is a large stand there. This is a large stand here. That's fine. This isn't in the international zone. That's OK. I don't want it to be. What I then discovered was there is a setting when you create your when you start your game certainly in sandbox mode which says that large stands are always international stands so they always have to be in an international zone secured behind passport control again this is a setting i forgot to to configure um, and the, the the logic behind that from from the sort of, of the people explaining it was it just means that people learn they have to have passport control to get to an international stand to a large stand, which to me just sounds that's an excuse. That's not a reason that that's just I, I don't like that design, <laughs> but that's just me. So I thankfully I can go into my game settings here, gameplay settings, and I can set what is called realistic international stands, which when you first read it, when you first come into the game, you have I have no idea what that really means. There's a lot of text and it's just odd. So when enabled, any stand can accept international flights and connect to boarding desks in an international zone. If disabled, large stands 
and this is the key word, require connected boarding desks in an international zone. So that was what was going on. I had disabled that setting when I started the game. So large stands always require an international boarding desk. Good. So I, I turned that back on. Uh, that then temporarily disconnected this stand here because it was then changed to domestic. So I had to reset that to international. So this new symbol appears here on the dialog. They could just put this here. Uh, and people will, will get it, they'll understand. If there's a proper tutorial and help, then people would understand. But that's not how it works. Anyway, enough ranting and raving. We have got this working now, I think. Let's get this setup finished. I need to connect you. Have I connected you to a service stop? I'm not sure I have, so I connect you to that. So that's where the ramp agents and so on will board to get to uh, to this stop here. So that looks fine. I'm going to configure it only for Lufthansa for the moment, uh, which is the another gameplay setting that uh, I think I might need here, which was use Schengen visa rules. I'm assuming that Birmingham is still in the EU. I certainly hope it is. <laughs> so that any EU flight to any flight to a European country within the EU will be considered domestic because that's how it should be. That, I think, is all ready to go. I need to get some vehicles, though, before we can uh, set this going, just to make sure that they can support it. So we are going to need... Let's get a large baggage truck. We'll get another one of those. A large belt loader. Yeah, we'll get one of those. We'll need another large pushback. Uh, another couple of stair trucks. Uh, and we probably ought to get another couple of airside buses. Okay, and probably another service car. Uh, that, oh, catering trucks I was looking at, wasn't I? So we'll get, we'll get another two of those. And perhaps another two cleaning trucks. Okay, and see how that goes. Right, that might be enough. If I activate this, enable that it's open and it should be it's scheduled for Lufthansa oh we've got nine flights already have we for Lufthansa have we oh they're, no they're already scheduled on the other desk <laughs> on the other stand the international one. Oh, that's fine. Oh, OK. In which case, we'll turn this one to any airline. That's good. It is domestic only. I think we're ready to go. Uh, nothing yet on that stand. That's OK. Yeah, we don't have the vehicles yet to support it. But uh, what day? We're currently on Sunday. Monday. We've got a few days, I'm afraid, until we get our first Lufthansa flight. But there you go. Oh, hang on. I just noticed that. 45 out of 45 active flights from Goosewing. Oh, I thought... I wonder why that's gone down to 45. Interesting. Because all the others are 50. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe it's something to do with the contract. Can I inspect that contract? Uh... Probably not from here. It'd be nice if you could inspect the contract from here. If we go into contracts. Uh, oh, Nature Fuel, they want to renegotiate. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, where's Goosewing? Good. Where is Goosewing? Oh, and Trinity, they've come back to the table. Good. <laughs> Nothing there saying anything about a maximum number of flights. Okay. Oh, I'm going to need new staff, aren't I? We're going to need probably more passenger service agents for that new boarding desk. Oh, who have we got? We'll take you. And also you. And we'll train you up in a moment. And we'll also want some more ramp agents, I'm sure. We'll take you. And you. Okay, did I, did I click higher on you? I have now. So, I'm not sure. When are we going to get a flight in on our new... Ooh! 
we are Sunday. Oh, we've already got we've got a, a Crown Air flight coming in soon. That's going to be an A320. Okay, so we will see that one come in and we'll leave the episode at that point, which should then prove if I've got the number of staff and vehicles right, which will be interesting. Oh, the, uh, the bus has turned up already. Actually, can I set a different arrival-only stop? Yeah, let's have them... Oh, while it's handling the flight, no. Okay, <laughs> what I was just thinking is we could have all the arrivals going to that one stop here, which is what the other two remote stands do. But, okay, we can't do that. Oh, what a tiny little plane. And you are... A320 from Crown. Where are you? Oh, you're a domestic. That's fine. And how are we doing for staff? Service technicians. Actually, we are a bit short on those, so that's not, uh, not too worrisome. We haven't really given them much love for a while. Uh, Six point two. Ooh, you guys are, are kind of expensive. But uh, Sabina, welcome to the team. Uh, we do apparently need more than one extra person, but that's what I'm going to pay for. Vehicles, a belt loader. Oh, we need more belt loaders. Okay, we'll get the large one. I think you're okay for medium aircraft as well, I think. Oh, another vintage plane. We haven't seen this one yet before. This is the 377. Lovely looking old prop aircraft. Again, if, if you've not seen it and you want to know more about the Vintage DLC, I did do a separate video ex just ex looking exclusively at the Vintage DLC, showing off this Vintage stand and all the different aircraft and companies that uh, come with that particular DLC pack. So, uh, yeah, just I might put a link to that in the description below. But you can probably find it quite easily on my channel anyway. Right, you're a medium aircraft, so you're not going to have too many people boarding. 28, that's, that's, or one bus can handle that, that's not a problem. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how many they carry. I, I'm sure I've, I've saw one, I'm sure, on one of my medium gates, carrying about 60 people. So I'm not sure what the actual capacity is on these. But there you go. Yeah, the pusher. Oh, that's a point. Am I going to need another small pushback truck? Where's the pushback? I've got three. Actually, could do... Yeah, we'll get another small pushback as well. Oh, dear. Where are they? Pushback, pushback. Uh, we've got the two large. That, yeah, we'll get another ordinary pushback truck. Yeah, just in case. Right, so there we are. That appears to be working fine. And we have a lovely, a proper big aeroplane coming in. And we will leave it at that, I think. I'm afraid you're not going to see a Lufthansa flight today. But we have seen and discovered all sorts of little quirks of the game, which is fun, I think. But uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Airport CEO. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Just click on the old thumbs up button. Even better though, if you've got any hints or tips, suggestions, recommendations, or even criticisms of what I'm doing in the game, please do drop a note into the comments box below. It's awesome to hear from you. And of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Airport CEO. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.